sexual persona seeks to demonstrate the unity and continuity of Western culture, something that has inspired little belief since the period before World War I. The book accepts the canonical Western tradition and rejects the modernist idea that culture has collapsed into meaningless fragments. I argue that Judeo-Christianity never did defeat paganism, which still flourishes in art, eroticism, astrology, and pop culture. The first volume of Sexual Personae examines antiquity, the Renaissance, and Romanticism from the late 18th century to 1900. I demonstrate that Romanticism turns almost immediately into decadence, which I find throughout major 19th century authors, even Emily Dickinson. The second volume will show how movies, television, sports, and rock music embody all the pagan themes of classical antiquity. My approach throughout the book combines disciplines, literature, art history, psychology, and religion. What is art? How and why does an artist create? The amorality, aggression, sadism, voyeurism, and pornography in great art have been ignored or glossed over by most academic critics. I fill in the space between artist and artwork with metaphors drawn from the Cambridge School of Anthropology. My largest ambition is to fuse Fraser with Freud. What is sex? What is nature? I see sex and nature as brutal pagan forces. My stress on the truth in sexual stereotypes and on the biologic basis of sex differences is sure to cause controversy. I reaffirm and celebrate woman's ancient mystery and glamour. I see the mother as an overwhelming force who condemns men to lifelong sexual anxiety from which they escape through rationalism and physical achievement. I show how much of Western life, art, and thought is ruled by personality, which the book traces through recurrent types or personae masks. My title was inspired by Ingmar Bergman's cruel, dreamy masterpiece, Persona, 1966. My method is a form of sensationalism. I try to flesh out intellect with emotion and to induce a wide range of emotion from the listener. I want to show meaning arising from simple everyday things, cats, grocery stores, bridges, chance encounters, and thereby to liberate criticism and interpretation from their imprisonment in classroom and library.